Would you say that besides for, you know, what you were saying with my oldest brother, any other like regrets in terms of the way you parented, not in terms of like a specific choice, but in terms of like a more of a general approach or. I think in general, I think um, I'll speak for myself and Ima may agree. Um, I've grown in terms of just having a better understanding of, of children's needs and um, being more attuned to, to what, what their feelings, what they think, what they feel, and um, giving them more of a role in, in those decisions, important decisions uh, in general. I think, um, like I said, Baruch Hashem, we're very, very proud of each of our kids. Each one is very unique and very different. And uh, I think that's, I actually think that's wonderful. Welcome back to The Jews Next Door. We have a special mini episode where I have the opportunity to sit with my father, who is my greatest role model and someone who raised me, and speak a little bit about his parenting and the way he was raised a little bit. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this little mini episode. Thanks for having me. So, you know, I, I, first things first, you know, I, I know the, obviously our, fa- our our family dynamic. Now that all of your children are all grown up, okay? I'm, the, I'm your youngest. So what's one thing that you would say that you did successfully? Um, or maybe one thing that you would maybe have done differently? Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm proud. I'm very proud that each of of our six children is that first of all, the kids are very close. So having fostered those relationships, I think is, is something we're very, very proud of. How did you foster um, that? I think that we growing, raising the children, we, we family time was sacred, even though my, I have a busy schedule and a lot of demands, family dinners and outings and time as a family together. To, True. You really always came home for before your board meetings to make sure to be home for dinner and then you'd go back out again. Right. We scheduled things that way and we, we, we made, that was, you know, Ema's, to Ema's credit, that's something that she always felt was important and she was, she was so correct. You know, the research actually shows that the family dinner is the greatest safeguard against children getting into unhealthy habits, drinking, drugs, those kinds of things. There's research that supports the children, those children that were raised in a family where family dinners and family time was, was sacred. They have a much better chance. Our whole entire program, Gen Alf, is literally based off of that research because everything that we do, everything in Gen Alf is all about creating more bonding between parents because that is what will get people to be more children to be less on drugs and alcohol and different things. Exactly like you're saying. So, 100. percent The other thing I would say about about our parenting or our children, proud of the fact that they're all connected to the to their to the Jewish community, all connected to the Mesorah. That's something that we can't take for granted. Raising their own children accordingly, going to yeshivot or day schools. Those are things we're we're very, very proud of. Looking back, I learned a lot, you know, with your oldest brother, our <laughs> oldest our oldest child, our first child. I kind of feel like you're um, I kinda of knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> yeah. We sent him away for high school. In retrospect, that was not that was not the right thing for him, and he never uh, appreciated it. And I wasn't as open as I should have been to to his feelings and his and where he was at. And I think I would look at things differently. Why do you think that it was such a? I mean, what was it about it that was a mistake about it? Meaning the fact that you didn't listen to his feelings, or meaning what was it about that you wanted him to be away? I thought it was. I thought as parents, it was our that we knew better. It was our decision and because we knew better and we had the life experience to, to put him in the right environment, in the right place. And whether it was the right place or right environment, the fact that his feelings about it and his attitude towards it were not positive, uh, just going, I think impacted significantly. And so we should have been more, more in touch. It's with, interesting because you fast him. forward to five children later, if you remember my high school decision, I really wanted to go to one school. You and Ima wanted me to go to a different school, and you actually really allowed me to make that decision. And I, I did go to the school of my choice, which uh, so right, right. No, I don't know that we wanted you as much as we assumed you would be going to a particular <laughs> high school, <laughs> right? And um, and when you came to us and and gave the reasons that you did, we were very supportive. That's true. So maybe we grew, <laughs> maybe we grew in that process as well. Totally, totally. You know, it's something. It's interesting. You, I feel like knowing. You know, I don't always usually know the 
parents of the people that I interview, but here knowing my grandparents, I, I know that you grew up in a home that's very growth oriented, you know, being, and maybe if you want to share a little bit about that, but clearly you have that growth oriented mindset within you from maybe, I don't know, would you say that that's from the way that you were raised or? Yes. Absolutely. My parents, um, you know, it's, it's probably beyond the scope of this podcast, the entire story, but my parents um, originally sent me to, to a Hebrew school, after school program. I started out in public school and had someone who took a lot of interest in me, a teacher, and he suggested to my parents that I go to yeshiva. And my parents said, if Gedalia wants to go to yeshiva, Gedalia can go to yeshiva. It was that simple. And um, my parents, you know, grew up in homes, European homes, and they didn't go to yeshiva. There wasn't, there wasn't the, there weren't the funds and there wasn't the, it wasn't the thing at that point to do. Um, and um, ended up not being Shomer Shabbos. And um, when they sent me to yeshiva, they were open to my coming home with whatever I would come home with. And, uh, Ultimately, the, the family changed. My parents changed. My father made a lot of sacrifices. Both my parents made a lot of sacrifices for, um, for the lifestyle that they chose at that point. And, um, and since then, my siblings and, and all of the descendants of those families are, are Hashem, Shemer Shabbat, and, uh, and connected. So, yes, absolutely. My parents raised me and were role models for for growth and openness and uh, and change, I would also say that uh, in terms of my career path, they were always supportive and always very very proud of the fact that I chose to become a rabbi and that I chose to go into Jewish education without ever any doubt that 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 was the right thing for me because because that's what I wanted and that what that's what I that I gravitated towards. They were tremendous cheerleaders and supporters, and and that made a big difference in my, you know, my feeling, uh, positive about, about my, my decisions. Yeah. I remember every single time you, whether in the, in, the, in terms of davening on the Yom Narayim or in school, they were extremely, extremely proud. It's true. It's very true. Would you say that- And they'd be very proud of you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you say that besides for, you know, what you were saying with my oldest brother, any other like regrets in terms of the way you parented, not in terms of like a specific choice, but in terms of like a more of a general approach or. I think in general, I think um, I'll speak for myself and Ima may agree. Um, I've grown in terms of just having a better understanding of, of children's needs and um, being more attuned to, to what, what their feelings, what they think, what they feel and um giving them more of a role in in those decisions important decisions uh, in general i think um like i said bar hashem we're very very proud of each of our kids each one is very unique and very different and uh i think that's i actually think that's wonderful it's actually true we we have a very like across we have a very wide like spectrum within our family you know anyone who's listening who knows like you you know like there's a lot of different types of both in terms of religiously and personalities, a lot of different things, a lot of different types of people in our family. How, how did you, I guess, and Ima, go and raise Hanukh Lenar Darko in that concept? Meaning, how did you raise each of us individually to give us what we needed and not just based, like, give us one approach? So I think you, as parents, you try to give a, a strong fal- value-driven foundation to your kids and you try to give them input and decision-making and facilitate their independence as they get older, give them exposure to, to a variety of, of things so that they can make intelligent decisions and choices and then be supportive. You know, we're fortunate that our kids may have made decisions that, uh, that we're proud of that are aligned with our values. And even though, you know, there's a range in, in terms of many different ranges, um, nevertheless, where each one is, you know, is a good person, is a compassionate person, is connected to Yiddishkeit and, uh, and raising families with those same values. And, you know, we have from Haredi to, to more modern and everything in between in terms of religiously, but Baruch Hashem, all good people and all go- doing good things for, uh, for their families and for their communities. Yeah, it's very true. You know, one of the things that I a value, you're talking about like you really gave us values and I, and I completely agree. One of the things that probably maybe one of the strongest values I got from you 
besides for caring about others, was actually a care for davening. I'm curious, how did you help me to develop that? Because some davening was something that I, as a child, always took very seriously. And I, I know for a fact I got it from you. I'm curious, how did you help me to, to develop that? But even just as like an example, there's one time I remember when I was younger, probably in high school, and there were, you were at the 930 Marv. I think I had already davened, if I recall correctly, Marv. And you called me and said, we need you for a minion. And I would almost never watched TV. I was not a big TV person, but I was watching the one show a week that I liked to watch, 24. And I, it was you know only on for one hour a week. And it was like, if you missed it, you missed it. Like It wasn't like nowadays when there's like Netflix and Hulu and all these different things where you could like catch up if you miss it. And I remember you called me and it was the middle of the show. And you said, we need you. You're number 10 for Minion. And I remember being so conflicted. And then at the same time, it was like so simple. Like, obviously I need to go. Somehow you and Ima together helped really to give me that. How did you, like, I know it's like a very specific example or just feel in general. And I know I'm putting you on the spot on this one, but <laughs> I'm curious. So first of all, I, I, I would say that Tfilah for me is very, very important. You know, I'm Talmud of Rav Salvechik. Rav Salvechik spoke about the importance of, of connecting, the personal connection to davening and the, the, the spiritual connection that a person is, is looking to accomplish. So, of course, there was a certain amount of modeling. I also, you know, at, at our Shabbos table and Yom Tov table, I would, I would talk about things and, and often talk about topics relating to davening, just not in a... Uh, not in a there was direct teaching to plant sort of subtle messages, and I have to say, you, you've taken tefillah to a different level. So um, <laughs> you're 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 a role model for me at this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't, if you I don't know if you can think back to like what some of those like seeds are that you like planted in terms of like what what were some of those types of things that you would do at the Shabbos table that you'd bring up, not in that, not necessarily in the form of a dvar Torah, because you'd always give a dvar Torah. That I know. I'm curious, like what were some of those, you know, either subtle or not necessarily subtle, but seeds that you would plant? So we, we talked about, we, we, we would have conversation about davening and the role of davening, open conversations. And uh, Ima also certainly contributed. And I think we, we, we wanted our kids to, to understand that that's a very private and personal time and a very special opportunity to connect. And, you know, different kids in the family have uh, internalized it in different ways. That's true. Last question. Is there anything in terms of the way that you were raised that impacted the way, the parenting style that that you chose? Well, there are things you learn from your parents to do, and there are things you learn from your parents not to do. Mm. In my family, in my within my parents, wonderful people, and really uh, have tremendous akarata tov to them. My dad was more of the, call it disciplinarian or strict one, and my mom was more of the softy. And Ema and I decided from the outset that we, we didn't want that to be the case. We wanted to both be very connected with our children and not that there should be a situation where I'm, I'm only going to talk to Ema and I'm only going to talk to Abba. Although it has evolved, I think, when it comes to certain things, purchases and uh, <laughs> spending and things, that there there is a dynamic there. Um definitive di- dynamic but um overall i think we tried very hard to to be aligned and to be to be together and if we didn't agree with and how to how to approach something with with one of the children we worked that out first right. i think that's really important and i think the openness and the support that my parents showed towards me in whatever i did um, and i didn't always make the right decisions but they gave me the the trust and the confidence to make decisions and to be independent and to be proud and supportive. And that's something that I've tried to, to emulate as well. Hmm. Love it. Any, any final message on parenting that you'd like to impart? I would say that the parent child relationship is such a unique and special one. It serves really as the basis for all relationships moving forward. It's, it's something that I'm so, I'm impressed that, um, that the OU and that you have taken on this project because it's so important to have thoughtful conversations about parenting. You know, the joke was always that, oh, you know, we become parents, there's no handbook, there's no guide, and we just are thrust into that situation. And the truth of the matter is, I think we, certainly in the Jewish community, are learning that it shouldn't just be, you know, on the fly, you make decisions, but you should be thoughtful about 
about the approach and about- There's no handbook, but there's a podcast. There's a podcast, <laughs> right. And I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. It was a real pleasure to, to learn more about your parenting from my own father. Really, such a pleasure. And uh, thank you, Alves. Love you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Jews Next Door. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I'd love to hear your takeaways. Reach out to us. Reach out to me at yair at jenoff.org. Hi at jenoff.org. You can check us out on the website. You could leave a question there. We'd love to be in touch. Please be in touch. Check us out on Instagram at Parenting the Jews Next Door. Hit me up on Twitter at Yair Manchel. And we got, we're on TikTok now too. We have some great content, a lot of really great insights into parenting, tips, parenting pointers, reaction videos, and quotes. We have a lot going on. We have a lot of articles. You want to check it out. Check it out at jenoff.org. You won't be sorry you did. And I look forward to hearing from you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe and share with your family and friends. Looking forward to another great episode next week.